Hello there, everybody. My name is Michael Gray, and this is another edition of Argo Pump Talk, the series where I talk about various things you guys want to hear. Our first question today is, what song is stuck in your head right now? And this is an interesting question because I have an iPod here, and this is something people tell me happens all the time. You have an iPod like this one, and maybe you have like, I don't know, 600, 500 songs on it? Well, what usually happens is you don't listen to all 600 songs. Instead, you listen to one song over and over and over again, instead of listening to this great variety of music you own. That's happened to me a couple of times. Uh, I'm just looking up how many songs I have here. I have a uh, 100 or something? 102, about 102 songs, and that includes books on tape, so... I don't know how many songs that is really, maybe... 50 songs, not that many songs. Anyway, um, there are a couple of songs which I've just listened to over and over and over again. Um, Thunderbird by They Might Be Giants, but most recently I've been listening to a song by the Ames Brothers, which is called Someday You'll Want Me to Want You, and it sounds like this. I know that someday you'll want me to want you when I'm in love with somebody else. Yeah, uh, it's sort of an old-fashioned 1930s song. I like it. I thought it was fun. Turns out that it's a country song. Yeah, it's supposed to be played on a guitar, slow country music song. And I have it memorized as a barbershop quartet song, as you heard there. So that's a song which is stuck on my head, but I can't actually sing it correctly because it's a completely different genre than the version I have memorized. I'm sure that happens with other people, though. If you, you listen to covers of songs a lot, you'll have the uh, wrong version of the song completely memorized. Maybe that's happened to other people. Maybe it's just something weird that only happens to me. I'm not sure. Next question is sort of a two-part question. Would you approve of Nancy Drew and Ned Nickerson getting married? And would you pick Bess or George to take as a date to the wedding? Wow. Okay, so Nancy Drew and Ned Nickerson. Them getting married. Hmm. I have two points to make here. Um, number one, I think Nancy Drew is still a teenager. She's a teenage detective, so I think she might be a little bit too young to be getting married. That's all I'm going to say. I think she's a little too young to get married, that's all. Ned is still in college, right? Now, when I got out of college uh, one or two or three years after college, no, just one to two years after getting out of college, every single person I knew got married. Every person I knew got married immediately after graduating college. Well, not immediately, uh, one and a half years. But still, it's like, what is going on here? It, it just scared me. So let's wait until Nancy and Ned graduate from college, and a year and a half later they can get married. That's it. But um, number two, number two, Nancy and Ned have been dating a long time. They've been dating for like 60, 70, 80 years. You know, that's a long time to uh, be dating without getting married. So maybe they should get married. I don't know where they would get married. Clearly not in the Nancy Drew video game series. Maybe in one of the books, although I kind of doubt it. Um, there's a book series where she is younger, right? There's a book series where she's a third grader or something like that, and she's solving mysteries. So if there's a book series of younger Nancy Drew, maybe there can be a book series of older Nancy Drew, who's in her 40s, and she's married to Ned, and she's solving mysteries, and she's pursuing her career, whatever her career could be. I really can't imagine her in any career other than professional detective, but that's sort of a dangerous career, and you know Ned would worry. He worries enough as it is, and she's just an amateur detective at this point. If she was a professional detective, I think he would be super worried. Mm -hmm. As for would you pick Bess or George as a date, I think that is a loaded question, because as soon as you pick one, you can never ever date the other. I can't think of a situation where, say, you know, I go out with Bess a couple of times, and then maybe I go out with George a couple of times to see which one I like better. 
no, no. It, this isn't a clothing store. I'm not going to try them on for size or something like that. Mm -mm, no, no. They need to be treated with respect because they're both great women. So, you know, and of course, you know, Bess and George would sort of gossip about it. I can't imagine, you know, me going out on a date with Bess and Bess not wanting to talk about it to her friends, right? So as soon as I date one, the other one is immediately going to know about it because Bess is going to force a huge conversation about the date and everything which happened. So if you have to pick between Bess or George, I think it's a pick for life, right? Because, you know, as soon as you pick Bess, George is completely out of the picture forever. As soon as you pick George, Bess is completely out of the picture forever. So this is a very important decision because I can only make this decision once. Fortunately, they're both fictional characters, so I don't have to worry too much. Um, I think one answer would be Bess because Bess is the pretty one, right? No, no offense to George. Sorry, George, no offense to you. But Bess is traditionally the pretty one, and all the guys like flirting with her. They don't like flirting with George all that much. So part of me saying, oh, I need to pick Bess. She would be a great date because she's very pretty, um, which is very shallow and superficial of me. I apologize. But another part of me is like, whoa, 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 hold on a second. She's very pretty, which means I'm going to have to fight off all these other guys who are trying to date her, right? Because she has all these hundreds of thousands of guys who are trying to flirt with her. So that would make her a bad date. And you know, because we're going to Nancy Drew's wedding, there are going to be hundreds of handsome guys showing up screaming, No! No, Nancy, don't marry him! Marry me instead! We'll have all the guys from all the Nancy Drew games. We'll have, we'll have Colin Baxter. We'll have Dylan Carter. We'll have Henry Bolet. We'll just have all the handsome guys show up. We'll have Dave Gregory show up, too. They'll all show up, and they'll all be crying at the wedding. So there will be a lot of attractive single men at Nancy Drew's wedding. So if I went with Bess, I would have to fight off an awful lot of guys. So I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to pick George. You know what? George isn't that bad. She likes computers. I like computers. We can talk about computers. There we go. There we go. We have something in common already. And the final topic is Facebook. Do I have a Facebook? Yes, I have a Facebook. My name is Michael Gray, and there are probably dozens, if not hundreds, of Michael Grays on Facebook, so it's probably going to be impossible for you to find me. There's a Facebook group, which is uh, I Love Michael Gray slash Argelfump. Um, I'm in that group, so so um, maybe you can find me through that. Um, you can try to add me on Facebook. Odds are I'm not going to add you because I rarely, if ever, check the list of friend requests. I think I have more people on my friend request list than I have songs on my iPod. Yeah, that's that's probably fairly accurate. But you can follow me on Twitter at Argelfump. You know, you can follow me on that, and that way I don't have to personally approve every single person. So, yeah, that's less work for me. Follow me on follow me on uh, Twitter. Usually what I do is I will post the exact same thing as a Facebook status and as a Twitter status update because I'm lazy. Um, also, you know, it's kind of an easy way to get two status updates at once, just saying. So... Yeah, if you follow me on Twitter, you probably won't miss all that much, you know, which you would get if you followed me on Facebook. And that's it, everybody. Okay, those are all my questions. Uh, the song which is stuck in my head. Um, Nancy and Ned's wedding. George would be my date. George Fane. And you know what? I'm starting to think, you know, George's mom is a caterer, which means she makes delicious food. I sure hope I'm not just saying, yes, I want to go on a date with George just because I want delicious food. I mean, I know they say the best way to a man's heart is through his stomach, but I really hope I'm looking for more in a girl than just her ability to have her mother cook delicious food for her. Yeah, yeah, that's really, <laughs> I'm really not that shallow, even though I'm, I swear this video is making me look like a horrible, horrible person. And number three, Facebook, Facebook, I have a Facebook, but it'd be better for you to follow me on Twitter. Okay, that's it for Argyle Fump Talk. Next time I'll be talking about other things and hopefully I will look less ridiculous. See you later, everybody.